official mission was uh, to collect uh, drought resistant plants uh, to fight the soil erosion back in the United States. Yet, the party was more interested in um, uh, monitoring local political situation, uh, collecting local military uh, uh, intelligence, and the head of the party uh, very much wanted to plug himself into local indigenous uh, prophecies, especially he was interested in one uh, prophecy, Buddhist prophecy called Shambhala, which uh, mentioned uh, uh, the end of the world and the coming of the a glorious redeemer who would uh, save the people of uh, inner Asia from the people of the alien faith. Of course, it raised the eyebrows of the Japanese intelligence uh, service. It also uh, raised a lot of questions on the part of uh, Britain and uh, other nations. It was a very sensitive, uh, uh, the area was a hot spot because uh, after Japan occupied uh, northeastern China, Manchuria, and a part of Chinese Mongolia. So United States denounced it, uh, broke relations with Japan, and here, here we have uh, an expedition working on behalf of the US uh, Department of uh, Agriculture. <coughs> this strange enterprise uh, was, uh, the man who was in charge of this pipe was, uh, Nicholas Roy. So here you see it, uh, 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 people in the military uh, uniform. Uh, and Roy, this man with uh, this charismatic appearance who built himself as a, uh, a local messiah. So he wanted to plug himself in local indigenous uh, prophecies, which aroused suspicions of uh, <coughs> intelligence, Japanese intelligence. Uh, this uh, strange uh, expedition, botanical expedition, quote unquote, was uh, backed up by Henry Wallace, uh, Secretary uh, of Agriculture, U.S. Secretary of Agriculture. That's where my story begins. <coughs> Wallace, uh, Wallace's name is usually associated with uh, this, uh, no less bizarre, but at least they made sense uh, to him measures attempted by Agricultural Adjustment Administration, uh, uh, infamous slaughtering of six uh, million pigs, then uh, plowing the farmers' crops in hope to keep the prices up. Wallace's name is also mentioned in connection with the uh, uh, 1948 blunder when he was running. Uh, he tried to run uh, for U.S. President on, uh, on the Progressive Party ticket. <coughs> I'm going to argue in my uh, brief talk that this bizarre expedition, botanical expedition, which uh, is normally treated as uh, some kind of a an aberration in uh, the biography of uh, otherwise uh, progressive uh, politician. I'm all going to argue that this bizarre episode wa was in fact a manifestation of this uh, crackpot uh, philosophy and the mindset of the people who were swarming to Washington in 1933 to try the mag magical curative uh, devices to uh, provide quick fixes for social and political uh, problems. <clears throat> I'm arguing that uh, this uh, quote-unquote botanical expedition should be included in uh, the list of, uh, again, no uh, less bizarre experiments conducted, especially in the early New Deal, like uh, Arthur Dale uh, in Virginia, an attempt to build uh, the new American man, a collective community, or uh, NRA measures, or uh, for that man, Indian New Deal. You may have heard about John Collier, uh, a U.S. Commissioner for Indian Affairs, uh, FDR's Commissioner for Indian Affairs, who wanted to build so-called Red Atlantis which might be an interesting topic to research for somebody. Um, a recent scholarship uh, <coughs> eradicated this uh, uh, sacred war that uh, New Deal uh, uh, had in the minds of uh, uh, public. Those people who, uh, so-called brain trust of uh, FDR, those people who came to Washington in 1933, in fact, uh, a lot of them were infested uh, with this crackpot philosophy, which was responsible for many blunders in uh, the first years of the New Deal. Um, Wallace, Henry Wallace, was one of those brainy guys. Robert Hicks called them brainy guys in, in his uh, lectures. And my story is essentially about 
how this brainy guys, how this brainy guy, whom FDR for some reason uh, called uh, old common sense, that's how he liked to call him, how he uh, uh, sent this expedition, which almost ended uh, in uh, diplomatic embarrassment for US government and cost not so much, but at least it uh, uh, was a waste, 70, uh, $79,000. <coughs> Documentary records reveal a recently opened archives in Rutgers. Uh, there were uh, papers recently uh, discovered. One of uh, <coughs> Aurora Associates revealed that uh, Henry Wallace, who was admitted in uh, Rorick Circle under the esoteric name Galahad, after the famous seeker of the Holy Grail, knew about uh, the painters. Rorick was a painter about uh, Rorick's geopolitical project and uh, backed it up and later did everything to uh, eliminate his correspondence or manuscripts which he had uh, that could compromise him. <clears throat> why did he support it? So first of all, why did he support this uh, reckless uh, experiment which later uh, he tried to hide? First and foremost is that uh, for him, uh, if you read Wallace's uh, books and memoirs, the essence of the modern and progressive for Wallace revolved around the planned society based on collectivism. Society that uh, should be navigated by uh, the enlightened masters, and he viewed himself as one of the enlightened masters. Of course, you know Wallace was anti-capitalist. Of course, you know if you read about New Deal that uh, Wallace had uh, uh, sympathy for socialism. But it's not the whole story. Unlike um, he shared, in this case, he shared the same ideas uh, of uh, uh, FDR's circle, or at least the uh, ideas of many people who belong to the uh, brain trust. What uh, uh, set him aside is that uh, the new order that uh, uh, he contemplated for the United States uh, should be linked to a new spiritual revolution to a new spiritual revolution, which means uh, establishment of the new universalist religion. So that's how he plugged himself into this geopolitical experiment of uh, Nicholas Roark. Uh, here is a few things that give us uh, the better picture of Henry Wallace, agriculturalist, frustration about mainstream Christianity. That's what brought him to uh, uh, spiritualism, universal religion, and eventually uh, encouraged him to support the Nicholas Roark. So he believed in uh, cooperatives. He came to the conclusion that light uh, comes from the East. Uh, <clears throat> he talked a lot about the environment, uh, uh, talked about the new order. Okay, the scheme, the scheme that Nicholas Roark tried to promote in, uh, in the heart of Asia is so-called the Sacred Union of the East. And the Wallace, as recent documentation, proves that he knew about it. He knew about it. And uh, they exchanged letters where they called this <laughs> geopolitical experiment as Kansas, the Great Plan, the most frequently used phrase, the new contract. It was contemplated this uh, 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 new state based on the new order and the new universalist religion was contemplated as a theocracy which uh, would show the humankind this uh, new spirituality. Okay. And the plan of Rorik was to build this uh, huge theocracy from Siberia to Himalayan mountains, from eastern China to India. And uh, the economic foundation of the society would be cooperative. Okay. Ideologies, universalist, ecumenical religion. Uh, Rorik courted the uh, uh, US establishment for a long time. If you uh, familiar with U.S. history, you know that uh, Wallace and Rorick are uh, also a spearheaded so-called Rorick Peace Pact. It's an analogy of the Red uh, Cultural Cross to fly a peace flag over the cultural sites uh, to be protected in a time of conflict. Uh, there is also, and uh, uh, it's not proven yet, that Wallace and Rorick participated in designing U.S. Uh, dollar bill, this phrase uh, novus order seclorum, new secular order supposedly was dropped into by Rorick and Wallace in this uh, old CNI, but again, it's, uh, there is no documentation for this, I'm not going to speculate. All right, so this is my major argument that Wallace, uh, Tugwell, these rainy guys um, uh, attempted the reckless experiments and uh, the Sacred Union of the East, or quote-unquote botanical expedition, was an integral part of this. <clears throat> well,
Why East Asia? Why East Asia? East Asia, as I said, was a hot spot at that time. A lot of things were going on. Mongolia and Manchuria were in revolt. Mongolia was revolting against Red Russia. Uh, Mongols at the, t at the same time were revolting against the Chinese, against the land they encroached. Japan uh, established a puppet state, Mongol puppet state in uh, Manchuria. So all these things uh, gave hope to Rorik and Wallace to establish this uh, theocracy as a counterbalance to uh, Japan. <coughs> It's a picture of Rorik Armageddon. So it's an expected Armageddon. So he built himself, Rorik, as the leader of this uh, new theocracy. And that's a picture of himself. He pictures himself as the new, like a Christ-like figure. All right, so here's the conclusion. So why uh, such reckless experiments? Again, it's a bizarre incident. It uh, might be treated uh, by some as an aberration. But here is the zeitgeist. I remember this German word zeitgeist, the spirit of the time. I'm trying to show that if you put this bizarre incident in the context of time, so everything will be clear. So uh, here is the spirit of the time. Big is beautiful. Cult of planning. So cult of planning became an article of faith, faith from San Francisco to the Ural Mountains, and people, uh, millions of people supported it. So it was uh, taken for granted that uh, <coughs> social engineering planning would be the radiant future. <coughs> Worship of science, and of course uh, the cult of uh, the enlightened master. It could be Mussolini, Hitler, Stalin, or FDR. Thank you.